that I'm sufficiently dry and a little bit warmer, we'll test out the other method of tipping the temperature. So the suggestion here is to use a cold pack or a Ziploc bag of cold water. As I stated previously, you can also get those cold packs that uh, you can keep at room temperature and just snap them open so that they create cold as something really easy to carry with you if you are someone who is prone to distress and or uh, responds in a way that you would like to change, then that's a good thing to take with you. So I have chosen to use the simplest method possible, which is frozen vegetables. Almost everyone has them in the freezer and they mold nicely to your face. So it should be, this is uh, first of all slightly less effective than dunking your head in the cold water. That one, although it's super inconvenient, it's also really, really effective. Um, this one is the one that I use more often because it's more accessible and it does work really well. It just doesn't work quite as well as the water. If you're in an actual crisis situation and you have it available to you, I would recommend the full cold water. With this, head below your heart like you're diving, uh, hold your breath the whole time and place this over your eyes, temples, nose and cheeks for again uh, at least 30 seconds. So my heart rate moment is 106, so I also had time to go back up after the last tip your temperature with the anxiety of doing another video. So, tip the temperature, version two. Thirty. So my heart rate is now down to 78. Wow. Just from 30 seconds of holding my breath with an ice pack on my face. Well, 215 seconds. So the other things that you can do is intense exercise. Everyone obviously knows what's intense exercise. I like to dance or jog on the spot or do jumping jacks, something cardio preferably. But if you're in a situation where that's not really feasible, uh, like four o'clock in the morning in an apartment building or at work, hanging out in the bathroom, uh, wall squats can also be very intense, or doing a plank, if you know how to plank, that's another good one. So this, after only a few seconds, I'm already starting to get shaky. It doesn't look like it's very much. You can definitely uh, pretend if anyone asks you that you're just, you know, hanging out, relaxing. It's not, it's not super obvious. It's something that you can do and not have it draw a lot of attention to you. It's tough. It is tough. So we're not going to be able to get an accurate heart rate on it, but that is one effective way of doing some intense exercise without it being very noticeable. The last part is paced breathing and paired muscle relaxation. So for paced breathing, uh, the point behind this is to pay attention to your breathing, breathe mindfully, breathe deeply, and to breathe out slower than you're breathing in. So breathe in to about the count of four, out to the count of Eight, so you should be breathing into your belly, not shallow breaths, as deep as you can, and slowly and counting in your head. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The 
This one I find very useful when you are becoming emotionally dysregulated or uh, beginning to get upset about something once you are at the top. Sometimes the measured breathing isn't as effective, um, but it is usually effective at helping you come back down if you aren't quite up there when you're at the top. Ace. So the other one is paired muscle relaxation. So this one I like to use especially when I can't sleep at night or if I feel like I'm very tense but I'm not able to relax myself. So it is taking groups of muscles and it is um, tensing them a lot. Not to the point of cramps but as much as you can tolerate and then letting it go. So hands and then let go. Uh, arms and then let go. Legs, tense up everything if you want to. And then releasing it releases some of the tension that was already present that you had trouble letting go of. Thank you very much. Well done.